The intent of this video is to discuss the attack and sinking of the Japanese Imperial Navy submarine I-52 on the night of June 24, 1944. We will also listen to the audio of the attack while it happened, matching it to the attack events. This is a part 14 video from the channel's Bombers vs. Submarines Battle of the Atlantic series. During the war, Japan traded with Germany, as, as discussed in this declassified August 1945 Military Intelligence Division document titled German Technical Aid to Japan. All of the images in this video are declassified. Under both the January 1943 and March 1944 agreements, Germany was to supply Japan with raw materials, military equipment, goods, plans, drawings, and technical assistance. The transfer of goods was to be conducted by surface ships and submarine blockade runners. Japan's primary interest was the acquisition of materials to aid to defend against the air attacks by B-29 bombers. This included materials related to jet and rocket-powered aircraft, increasing the high-altitude performance of piston aircraft, early warning radar, and anti-aircraft defensive weapons. A total of four blockade-running Japanese submarines were dispatched to Europe, as discussed in this Special Research History U.S. Navy Cryptology document, Battle of the Atlantic, Volume 2. The trip was considered very dangerous. Only one of the four submarines com completed the round trip safely. Two were sunk on the return voyage. The fourth Japanese submarine was I-52. I-52 carried 270 tons of tin, rubber, tungsten, molybdenum, and gold. It also carried 14 technicians and diplomatic officials. I-52 was sunk prior to reaching Europe. The trip's peril also extended to German blockade runners. Of the 41 German U-boats sent to the Far East, only four completed the round trip. The loss of I-52 is registered in this table from a February 1947 document titled Japanese and Merchant Shipping Losses During World War II by All Causes. I-52 sinking occurred on June 24, 1944, as highlighted in this row. June 1944 was a devastating month for the IJN as they lost three fleet carriers just a couple days earlier during the Battle of the Philippine Sea. The Battle of the Philippine Sea was the largest aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier battle in World War II. I-52 left Japan on March 10, 1944. The duration of the trip from Japan to Germany varied, but was roughly three months since the submarines needed to travel around Africa. I-52 is a large 2,500-ton class ASP transport submarine. Images of I-52 are not available. However, this is an image of its sister, I-53. It's about four and a half times the displacement of a typical German Type 7 U-boat. It was considered the largest built and most advanced Japanese submarine of its time. Characteristics of I-52 are shown on this page from a June 1945 U.S. Naval Intelligence Manual titled, The Japanese Navy. I-52 displaces 2,800 tons and is 360 feet long. That is a little under the length of a Fletcher-class destroyer. It was safe tested to a depth of 295 feet. Its cargo capacity equated to 250 tons. The plan was to have I-52 rendezvous with German U-boat U-530 at 9.15 p.m. on June 23, 1944. The rendezvous location with I-52 was selected to be outside the range of land-based long-range patrolling aircraft. The long-range aircraft zones of coverage are shown in this map from an August 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The rendezvous with I-52 occurred about here. The German U-boat transferred two German radio operators and an Exos radar detector. Once the transfer of goods and personnel was complete, I-52 headed towards the Bay of Biscay to unload its cargo. Unbeknownst to the Germans or Japanese, the Allies were well aware of this rendezvous due to ultra-intercepts and sent an aircraft carrier to intercept the U-boat meeting. The Bogue is a small escort-type carrier, as shown in this image. It was part of the U.S. Navy's U-boat hunter-killer group. 
It carried a complement of 24 aircraft. Its aircraft included 12 Wildcat fighters and 12 TBF Avenger torpedo bombers like shown in this image. The TBFs were configured as the sub-trackers and hunters. The TBFs were equipped with ASB series medium wave radar as shown in this page from a 1943 Radar Research and Development Subcommittee document titled U.S. Radar Operational Characteristics of Radar Classified by Tactical Application. Reliable ranges for U-boat detection equated to 15 miles. The TBF's loadout included two Mark 54 depth bombs, six sono buoys, and a single Mark 24 Fido acoustic homing torpedo. The Mark 24 torpedo would be located here, like in this Avengers loadout. Characteristics of the Mark 54 depth bomb are shown in this image. It contains around 250 pounds of an explosive fill. It will need to detonate within 25 feet of the U-boat's pressure hole to be lethal. Its fuse is hydrostatic and set to start the bomb's detonation train at a depth of 25 feet. The TBF can listen to underwater sounds if its sonar buoys are placed within the range of the submarine's noise-making propellers. The Mark 24 acoustic homing torpedo will steer itself towards the submarine and detonate on contact, like shown in this image from a 1946 National Defense Research Committee report titled Applied Acoustics in Submarine Warfare. Usage and tactics of depth bombs, sonar buoys, and the acoustic homing torpedoes was covered in the channels part 5, 12, and 13 videos. On the night of June 23, 1944, a TBF Avenger from Composite Squadron VC-69 picks up I-52 with its radar 10 miles out. This map from the TBF's tactical mission report outlines a sequence of tracking and attack events. Let's walk through the events and listen to the recordings. At one mile out, the TBF opens its bomb bay doors and drops two smoke lights and a purple sauna buoy. At a half a mile out, the TBF fires a Mark VI parachute flare to illuminate the submarine. The TBF attacks the submarine with two MK-54 depth bombs. The depth bombs detonate on the submarine's right side. The detonations may have damaged I-52, but they did not sink it. I-52 dived. Likely taking this crash dive profile from an April 1944 Chief of Naval Operations report titled German and Japanese Submarines and Their Equipment. I-52 was safe tested to a depth of 295 feet and will reach this depth in around three and a half minutes. The TBF turned right and flew in a figure eight pattern, bleeding off its airspeed in preparation to release its Mark 24 homing torpedo. The homing torpedo needs to be released at a speed of around 120 miles per hour. The torpedo could not be released due to an error, but an orange sonar buoy was dropped near the submarine's submergence location. The TBF made two right loop turns and dropped an MK-24 homing torpedo at I-54's approximate location. Traveling south, it dropped a blue sauna buoy and then another red sauna buoy at the north and a yellow sauna buoy at the west of the center orange. The crew monitored the sauna buoys during the attack. The crew monitored the submarine's propeller cavitations, torpedo contact explosions, large volumes of air escaping from the submarines, buckling bulkheads, and further explosions. The next day, oil and debris was found floating at the attack site. These are rubber ingots from the attack site. Surprisingly, Germany only had enough rubber to last until November 1944. As described in this January 1944 German Naval Staff Operational Division War Diary, blockade running submarines were to bring additional rubber to sustain supplies until the end of 1944. It is imperative to use blockade runners to bring sufficient rubber stocks. To increase the cargo car carrying capability of blockade runners, the Germans were even considering towing submerged holes filled with supplies. Let's listen to the crew and sauna buoy recordings of this attack. The sounds on this and the following record were recorded during actual anti-submarine operations of carrier-based planes in the Atlantic in the early summer of 1944. The recordings began when one of the planes on patrol made radar contact with a submarine on the surface. As the plane approached, the submarine started to submerge. A sauna buoy was dropped. Since it was not the improved 1A buoy, ringing microphonic sounds were present. There were also buzzing noises due to electrical interference from the ignition system of the plane. Nevertheless, rhythmic swishing propeller beats could be heard plainly. Listen to the propeller beats over the sonar buoy 
and note that they are very similar to those produced by our own small S-type submarines. occurred at 2347. emphasis on marking the buoys with smoke lights. stepping on a tin can, or the breaking of a pile of dried twigs. All 109 lives on board were lost. The sinking of I-52 was but one of the 996 Axis submarines sunk during World War II, as discussed on this image from a May 1946 Bureau of Navy Personnel Information Bulletin article. There were 130 Japanese submarines sunk in World War II. 
These blockade runners were vital to keeping Germany's war economy functioning, as described in this December 1943 German Naval Staff Operational Division War Diary. The blockade escorts were essentially to sacrifice themselves, if needed, to ensure safe passage of the blockade runners. In summary, all of the advanced code-breaking efforts and aircraft-deployed sensors and kill stores worked in harmony to sink I-52, depriving both Germany and Japan of the war materials exchanged. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.